the Bermuda Triangle or Devil's Triangle, the Hoodoo Sea, the Limbo of the Lost is an area of the North Atlantic Ocean which covers about 440,000 square miles between Florida, Bermuda and Puerto Rico. Over the years, a number of aircraft and naval vessels have gone missing under mysterious circumstances. It was the unexplained disappearance of the USS Cyclops in 1918 that first piqued the public's interest in the Bermuda Triangle. The ship was a 542-foot-long Navy vessel with over 300 men on board. In the last 100 years, over a thousand lives have been lost in the Bermuda Triangle. Now, over the years, there have been a number of explanations offered for how these disappearances occur. These range from alien abduction to shady government research to time travel portals. These are some of the more out there explanations, but scientists are still trying to find a reasonable one to explain these disappearances at sea. Now, first of all, you have to remember that the ocean is a very, very big place. After all, water makes up two thirds of the Earth's surface. On a map, the Bermuda Triangle might look tiny, but in real life, it's a vast and incredibly disorientating part of the sea. Even an experienced sailor could easily get lost in such a place. Add to this extreme and adverse weather conditions, and it becomes even harder to navigate. Now, another scary explanation offered by scientists is that ocean currents in the seas around the Bermuda Triangle caused massive waves responsible for the loss of these ships. Ocean currents and even calm seas can generate massive waves known as rogue waves. These can reach up to 30 feet high and can capsize even the largest of vessels. While rare, these rogue waves have been known to occur frequently in certain parts of the world. Now, fairly recently, meteorologists have proposed a theory involving hexagonal clouds. Studying satellite imagery of the Bermuda Triangle, these meteorologists discovered strange hexagonal gaps in the cloud formation. Some of these gaps are around 55 miles wide and create what scientists call air bomb. These are essentially microbursts of wind that are ejected from the edge of these hexagons at speeds of up to 170 miles per hour into the ocean, creating massive sudden waves more than capable of sinking ships. We already know there are numerous deep sea trenches and craters that cover the surface of the ocean floor beneath the Bermuda Triangle. And because of these, it's incredibly unlikely that we'll ever recover the wreckage of the ships and airplanes lost in this area. The ocean of our planet is a baffling beast to many scientists. We actually know a lot more about the surface of the moon and of Mars than we do about our own ocean floor. Until we uncover more knowledge, we can't answer any questions. But once we do, perhaps we'll finally be able to explain just what is going on with the Bermuda Triangle. Today, I thought I'd share a few secrets about the deep blue sea. It's an often stated fact that we know more about space than we actually do about our own oceans. The oceans comprise about two thirds of the totality of Earth's surface and contain a great deal of secrets. The average depth of the ocean is a little over 12,000 feet, but the deepest part of the ocean is a section of the Marianas Trench, called the Challenger Deep, at a crazy 36,070 feet. That's deeper than the flight ceiling of most commercial jumbo jets, and so deep that if Mount Everest were placed into the deep, it would still have over a mile of water on top of it. The area is named after the HMS Challenger, a Royal Navy ship that surveyed the area in 1951. The first people to submerge themselves and explore the deep were Jacques Picard, a French oceanographer, and Don Walsh, a lieutenant in the US Navy. They did so in 1960, reaching a depth of almost 36,000 feet in a submersible vessel called the Bathyscaphe Trieste, which used gasoline to aid in protecting the ship from the pressure of the deep water. The trench itself is formed by the Mariana tectonic plates forcing the Pacific plate underneath it. When testing the Trieste, Picard managed to break the record for the highest altitude balloon flight, meaning he holds the record for both the highest flight and the deepest dive. The descent to the trench took nearly five hours, but only three hours and 15 minutes to return to the surface, and due to a crack that had begun to form in the plastic viewing screen during the descent, they only managed to stay down there for 20 minutes. There's an incredible variety of life on Earth, but it might surprise you to hear that 94% of all known life forms are aquatic, making us humans a very small minority. There are more than 230 million species identified in the oceans. Not too surprising when you consider that life actually began to evolve in the sea around 3 billion years ago, but only started to evolve on land 400 million years ago. 
that's quite a head start. A lot of this life is incredible, and some of the oldest species in the world are still swimming around. Jellyfish, for example, have existed longer than dinosaurs or even sharks, first appearing over 650 million years ago. With only 5% of the oceans estimated to have been explored, it's likely that there are many thousands of interesting species yet to be discovered. Thanks to our wild imaginations and some degree of science fiction work over the last hundred years, we think of the deep sea as being full of giant creepy creatures, but in fact there's quite a variety of animals. In recent years, studies have been conducted including visits by filmmaker James Cameron which have shed light on them. There are, for example, arthropods, which are shrimp-like crustaceans growing anything between 15 and 30 centimetres long, many times longer than regular arthropods. There are also more unusual creatures, which we barely recognise as animals at all, called foraminifera. They survive on the tiniest particles drifting through water using tubular filaments to reach out and grab food from the sea currents. Sea cucumbers also grow out of the seabed, grouping together and facing into the water currents in an attempt to grab as much food as possible. There would be much more sea life down there, but due to the absence of light and the extreme cold, as well as there being a scarcity of food, it's very difficult for life to evolve sufficiently in order to survive. Interestingly enough, the world's largest chain of mountains, known as the Mid-Ocean Ridge, can be found almost entirely underwater, stretching across a distance of 65,000 kilometres. Despite being so enormous, it's believed that this area has been less explored than Mars or even Venus. It's also believed that there are many thousands of shipwrecks across the world's oceans, over a thousand shipwrecks on the coast of Florida alone, meaning that there could be a lot more history lying under the ocean than in any of the world's museums. Our planet Earth is a beautiful example of life. We have humans, animals, reptiles, insects and plants. Do you think there's any other planet like ours that has life? Do you think aliens exist? Welcome to You Curious, and today we'll be looking at the top pieces of evidence that prove aliens exist. Ten. Ancient evidence of aliens in cave paintings. The 10,000-year-old rock paintings found in the Kurama region of India depict spooky, faceless aliens and an antennaed object that looks just like what we now see as a UFO. 9. The UFO painting and art history aliens During the Renaissance, era UFO shapes popped up in works of art on several occasions. This is the Madonna with Saint Giovannini, also known as the UFO painting most likely painted by Italian Renaissance artist Domenico Galandio from around the 15th century. 8. The Nazca Lines The Nazca Lines located in southern Peru are a collection of over 10,000 lines etched into desert sands. They form around 300 geoglyphs of various images depicting animals, figures and plants. What's truly incredible about those geoglyphs is their sheer scale, some of which stretch over more than 9 kilometers and measure 30 meters wide. Due to their sheer scale, many consider that these Nazca lines must have been created from an aerial point of view, insinuating that aliens must have been responsible. 7. Crop Circles We've all heard of crop circles, and most would consider them to be a pretty modern phenomenon. However, the first publicly recorded crop circle was way back in 1678 in Scotland, which came to be known as the Devil's Circle. Crop circles are often large and complicated in their design, and they tend to be found in fields of wheat or corn where the stalks are bent into sophisticated shapes. 6. Foo Fighters No, not the band. Surely you must have wondered where they got their name from, right? Well, Foo Fighter was a term used by Allied aircraft pilots during World War II to describe strange aerial sightings believed to be UFOs in various accounts. They were described as glowing fiery lights speeding through the air, or sometimes quite close to the ground. Researchers have suggested that Foo Fighters can be explained as electrostatic or electromagnetic phenomena. However, there are no conclusive accounts as to what these sightings were, and the cases remain a mystery to the present day. 5. Physical Evidence There are such things as trace cases or close encounters of the second kind, what's defined in UFOlogy as instances where there is physical interaction with a UFO. This might be a landing mark, damaged vegetation, or weird residues. There are somewhere between 3,500 and 5,000 trace cases. As with anything UFO related, often these trace cases can be debunked as hoaxes, but some, to this day, still prove very difficult to explain. 4. Project Sign 
Project Sign was an official study under the United States Air Force put in place to investigate UFOs. It ran from 1948 to 1949, but was kept secret for years. The investigations undertaken by the project were intended to debunk speculations that UFOs had extraterrestrial origins. But of the nearly 13,000 sightings that were studied, 701 of them simply couldn't be chalked up to weird weather or man-made objects. In the end, the government simply had to classify these as unidentified. 3. Area 51 Area 51 has been the subject of many conspiracy theories over the years, mainly due to the controlled secrecy surrounding it. It was used to design and build military fighter jets and drones. However, conspiracies still persist regarding its alleged use as an alien research center. But why Area 51? It would be of no surprise for any government to have a research center for extraterrestrial life, and the extremely controlled site in the Nevada desert makes it the perfect place for such alien research to happen. 2. Martians are our neighbors When we think of aliens, very often we think of Martians, our nearby neighbors from the planet Mars. The main reason we look towards Mars for extraterrestrial life is because it's the closest to our own planet with a somewhat similar environment. The main similarity being that there was once water on Mars. Recent evidence shows that approximately 4.5 billion years ago, one-fifth of the planet was covered in water. In 2017, the Curiosity rover detected the presence of boron on Mars, and boron is something that's considered an essential ingredient for life. 1. The Drake Equation US astronomer Frank Drake developed an equation to estimate the number of planets that were capable of hosting life, and also capable of communicating with us. In 1961, he put together this equation looking at seven key factors, including how many stars have solar systems, the formation rate of those stars, the number of planets that could support life, and how many of those planets could form intelligent life. The figures used are debatable, but Drake calculated there to be approximately 10,000 possible intelligent species in our universe. Looking at everything together, there's not much concrete proof to really prove that aliens exist. 